Hey everybody, sorry about the little bit of uh, dim light there. Let me see if I can turn something on for you guys right here. There we go. Give you guys a better look at today's on camera, well not totally on camera, edition of the Cartoon Flashback Christmas Edition. I believe it's number four or five. You'll see the number in the title in the title box uh, below in the title below the video. But welcome to this new edition. Well, this, yeah, this newest edition or episode to the Christmas edition of the Cartoon Flashback. The month-long Christmas edition, all these Christmas-long, holiday-long, whatever you want to call it, of the Cartoon Flashback. And I'll tell you this, folks. I'll say this to you what, right now. This is one Christmas special that really has an interesting history, a really interesting backstory, if you will. Because the interesting part of it is the fact that there's going to be a lot of people that don't don't know much about how this came about. They're not really going to know much about how this special came about. You see, unless they do their history, it's real, real simple. You see, this special came about in 1996 due to the fact that in late 1995, in the fall of that year, and it, mostly at the beginning of 96. It came about due to Dick Entertainment and Sega of America, mostly Dick Entertainment and with the help of Sega, wanting to promote one of their games that unfortunately got canned and before it could even go into development. Well, it was in development, but it got canned because it didn't look so good uh, when the prototype, if you will, was shown. It wasn't look, it didn't look, it basically looked in the eyes of Sega, some of the Sega developers and all that, some of the people in charge at Sega, at Sega, it looked like crap, basically, to them. It looked like absolute crap. And so, of course, that game got canned, and of course, that was basically going to be Sonic. That was going to be the game known as Sonic Extreme. That's right. Sonic Extreme was actually going to be a, was going to be the game in which this Christmas special was going to be based around, or at least title wise was going to be based around. Unfortunately, that didn't come to pass. What came to pass was a game known as Sonic 3D Blast and, of course, Sonic Blast. Sonic Blast, of course, was on the Game Gear, and 3D Blast was, of course, on the Sega Genesis, the 32 on the Sega Genesis, I think the 32X, and even a Tiger Electronic game was given, and even a Game Gear game as well, which was, of course, just Sonic Blast. But that's basically where the title reference for Sonic Christmas Blast came into, from that. Yeah, basically, because basically here's the lowdown. When you would look at an issue back in the mid-90s, back in 1996, of Sonic the Hedgehog, around this time, around November and December, you would see an advertisement, state top advertisement for the Sonic Extremely Christmas. A Sonic Extremely, uh, something like an Extremely Sonic Christmas, or Sonic's Extreme Christmas, or whatever you want to call it. And it was going to be aired on the USA Network. That's right. USA was going to air Sonic's Extremely, or in this case, Sonic Christmas Blast, on its network. USA was going to do that. And again, this is all part, in, from what I understand, the deal that Dick Entertainment had made a 
along with Sega, to air Sonic the Hedgehog, both Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons at that time, both Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons at that time, on the USA Network. Now, the reason this happened is because USA had basically revamped their weekday morning animation lineup. They gone with the days of the Cartoon Express. De gone with the days of Cartoon Express. And in came the days or the era or the years, if you will, of the Extreme Action Hour. And the Extreme Action Hour contained cartoons made specifically for USA with the help of Dick Entertainment and some other studios. Cartoons based on things like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, you name it. They ended up airing on USA Network along with Sonic. But here's the difference between Sonic and those other shows. Sonic had two shows that were part of the Extreme Action Hour. Adventures and Sonic Saturday AM. So, what does a deal, so what comes from a deal with USA Network and Dick Entertainment and Sega, what comes of that? When you allow one network, one, ca one cable channel, one cable channel to air both your Sonic cartoons? Well, it's quite simple. What comes of it is Sonic Christmas Blast. And again, originally supposed to be based around title reference wise to Sonic Extreme, the game that didn't make it, you know, onto store shelves and stuff. Sonic Christmas Blast was a unique kind of uh, situation, it's kind of a unique special in that it kind of is a combination, a combination of both adventures, mostly adventures, and Saturday AM through cameo and reference. What do I mean by cameo and reference? Well, let's put it this way. 90% of this show is adventure is done in the adventure style. 90% of it. 98% of it is done in the adventure style. There's the adventure thing. Well, 10% of it is, ca is done with cameo, is done through a cameo, and references. The references go by with the city known as Robotropolis, or in this case, Robotropolis, or Robotropolis, or Robotropolis, whatever you want to call it. Robotropolis, basically. Through reference, that is one Saturday AM reference that puts a percentage in there. Another reference, of course, is swap bots. Even though they're not, even though they don't look like the swap bots from Saturday they are referenced. They are referenced as by Tails in this special. Basically, they're referenced as such by Tails in this special. And then, of course, you've got the cameo, which gives it a complete ten percent. And that cameo is of Princess Sally Acorn. That's right, Princess Sally Acorn makes an appearance. Not, at, not just once, but twice. Now here's what's unique about Princess Sally's appearance. Sally's appearance here in Sonic Christmas Blast was kind of a surprise. It was a nice little treat, a nice little surprise to the Saturday AM fans. To actually see what a Saturday AM, what a Saturday morning Saturday AM uh, mainstay character would look like if they were part of the adventure show. It was a nice little treat, a nice little nod. But here was the thing: Sally was drawn in her season one design. No, I'm not talking the heads or tails design. I'm talking the, the primarily the the primary. I'm talking basically her primary design that she used mostly, that was used mostly for her all throughout season one. The only similarity to her heads or tails design, her heads or tails pilot design, if you will, was the color scheme. 
That's right. Even though she had the Satyam design that we knew her for, for a majority of the entire show, even into the second season, minus the vest and minus the black eye pupils, it was the Sally design that we knew from Satyam and we know from the comics. But again, the only difference was she had the color scheme from the Heads or Tails pilot. So it kind of gives you an idea, perhaps, what she would have looked like had she really been incorporated into the Adventure Show, as I guess originally they were going to plan to do until, well, they decided to go into different routes with Sonic back in 93. Now, the special is really unique. It is a typical Sonic-like uh, adventure. The one thing about Sonic, I will give him credit, is he's not drawn all shiny like he is in the origi original adventure episodes. You see, in the original adventure episodes, he's kind of designed and drawn like he's made of rubber. You know what I'm saying? So, here, so here, it's kind of a, a, a nice little... Uh, to here it's a nice, it basically it's a, how do I put this, here it's basically a, here it's basically a nice uh, change of pace if you will, to see him drawn, not just as we would see, not just in a lighter color, but to kind of blend in with the Christmas theme if you will, but it's nice to see him drawn, not just in almost a similar Satyam design, but in a design that kind of references his 3D blast game. So it's nice to see that. It really is. It really is. Now, again, like I say, it is a typical Sonic adventure, Sonic adventure episode. Uh, basically, the plot is this. Robotnik, designed in his base, Robotnik, who is designed with his, who is drawn with his adventures design, his basically, as some people put it, the dumb dumb design, the stupid design, the Tex Avery design, if you will. And this, of course, is especially confirmed when you have Scratch and Grounder as a part of the special. <laughs> hey, could you ima ever imagine that? Scratch and Grounder in the same television, in the same Sonic cartoon show? As Princess Sally, well, you got it here. But anyway, yeah, Robotnik is drawn in his adventures design along with Scratch and Grounder. And basically Robotnik, or as he calls himself Robotnik Claus, his plan is basically to have Christmas, but to have it only for himself. In other words, he wants everybody to take any presents they might buy for their family and their friends and their loved ones and give them to him, and give it to them, or give it to him. Basically, he wants all the presents, basically what I'm saying is he wants everybody to take all the presents, like, let's say this thing here, okay? He wants them to take presents like this, even the tiniest presents that they would give to their loved ones or their families or their friends, and give it to him so that only he could have a Merry Christmas. Only he could be happy. All because he wants to enjoy the misery of everybody else. Now, of course, in typical Sonic fashion, you know, the day is saved. Sonic does save the day in typical Sonic fashion, but I'm not going to tell you how he does it. Let's just say a few things come in. Let's just say, excuse me, that's my stomach. Um, let me just say this. One of the Christmas gifts Sally gives Sonic the year before, according to the special, let's just say one of those Christmas gifts comes in handy. It really does. It really comes in handy. Over 
overall, it is a decent Christmas special to sit down and watch. Especially if you're a Sonic fan or if you just want a fun little Christmas special to watch with the family. It is a really nice special. Now, unfortunately, Sally does not speak in this. All she does at the end of it, when Sonic gives her the Christmas present that he planned to give her, all you hear her do is, Ooh! That's all you hear her do. And a lot of speculation goes around of maybe they couldn't get Cat Sushi or someone that sounded similar to her to be the voice of Sally. You know, whatever. No one... You know, that's just speculation. No one really knows why they couldn't get a voice for her in this special. My only assumption is she was just put in there as a reference and a cameo to Saturday morning, to Saturday end, to kind of give fans the indication that this Christmas special, yeah, yes, based more in the world and around the series and around the adventure series and based around that world from adventures, but also kind of give you the idea that even though 90% of it's based around that, here's also a little mixture of the other show to kind of sh give you the idea of the other show, Sad AM, to give you the idea of, yeah, this, yeah, that, yeah, this is, you know, an all Sonic kind of thing. Now, again, like I said, there were speculation that Sally might have had a voice in the series because as Sonic takes off, uh, with Tails to uh, go get her presents, even though, and this is a little subplot here, I guess you could say, where even though he and Sal agree no presents, even though they both kind of go back on the word, Sal, Sally did it the year before, Sonic basically does it this year, because he pretty much figures out that, hey, when a princess says no presents, she really means two stores. So, yeah, basically that's a little bit of a subplot there. Anyway, though, like I said, um, Sally, according to some people, including those of it, Spin Dash. Spin Dash did a commentary for, for Christmas Blast. And even they kind of speculate that Sally was supposed to have a voice. That they were supposed to get somebody to voice her, but it didn't happen, and that maybe... There was a scene where she was going to talk, or the extension, the extension of that scene of where she was going to talk, but they had to cut it out because they couldn't get a voice actress, or they couldn't get maybe Cat Sushi to come back in. No one really knows. It's just pure speculation. Anyway, though, this is a decent Christmas special, like I said, to sit down and watch if you're a Sonic fan. Or just sit down if you, with your family if you like watching a Christmas special every night or every day. You know, this is a good one for you. My recommendation, if you want to go a little old school, sit down after dinner tonight. If you have this special on DVD, if you have it recorded onto DVD or something, sit down with your family and your friends. If you will, sit down with them. After you eat dinner, get some egg, pour some eggnog or hot chocolate, a little whipped cream, put a little cinnamon in the eggnog, if you will. Sit down, um, pop the DVD in if you have to, if you, if you have it, and watch this special with your family. It is, it's a half, I mean, it's only about 24 minutes, 25 minutes long, so it's well worth it. You know, it's well worth the time to sit down and watch it. It really is. Um, just a little backstory too. When I first found out about this, I was visiting my family in 1996 here in California when they were still living in Livermore, California. Yeah, my family, basically, it basically is a personal situation, but I was living with my dad in Kansas at the time. And for Christmas in 1996, we decided to come out here and spend Christmas with the family, and I believe they were living in Livermore at that time. So, I got to watch it sort of for the first time in Livermore, and any time Toon Disney years later, when I moved out on my own, and all that, uh, when Toon Disney would show it on 
their on their channel, which is now Disney XD, I would watch it as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty much, you know, I've almost practically watched it since it first aired, and I gained it onto. Uh, I basically put it on DVD when I got the uh, VHS, and I basically got it on DVD when I started recording it off of Disney, Toon Disney, and basically after I got it through some torrents as well. So <laughs> I definitely have my share of it. And as you can see, I have the VHS right in front of you. Uh, but yeah, again, like I said, my recommendation, if you have this in some way, of shape, or form, watch it tonight, sit down, pour yourself some eggnog, pour yourself some hot chocolate, put marshmallows in a hot chocolate or whipped cream, Pour yourself some eggnog, put cinnamon in there if you want to, just sit down, watch the special with your family, or just watch it on your own, do the same th stuff, watch it on your own. I highly recommend you'll like it. It's really, it's really good. It's, it's a nice little 25 minute special. Um, I know some other people might have differences about it, like maybe Mixed Fan 8643, aka The Media Man over at DeviantArt might have some differences about it, but I think it's okay. I think I think it's decent. I think it's nice. Um, and believe it and believe it or not, it's not the only Christmas-related thing that Sonic has done. In fact, if you go to I believe one of the earlier issues, which I think is issue six or so, or eight, either issue six or eight, in the Archie comic book series, yeah, back way back then, in the first, like I said, either issue six or eight. They, uh, the back, the second story, the second tier story in the, one of those issues is Sonic's adaption of a Christmas Carol. And it's a really funny adaption. It's a really funny take on a Christmas Carol. So uh, definitely check that out too if you can find that. And I think you can find that at certain websites with under the CBR file. You know, just look it up. You might love, you'll get a kick out of it. Uh, overall, I do highly recommend watching this. And that's all I'm going to say for this edition, this Christmas edition of my, and that's all I'm going to say basically for this, this edition of the month-long Christmas edition of Cartoon Flashback. And talk to you all later. God bless. Take care. Comments are welcome.